Thank you for choosing CTN. And now, it's time with Herman and Sharon. I love you. Thank you for joining us. This guy right here, he wrote this book, Carl Gallup's, and we are embracing. Put your hand up there, Carl, right there. We are embracing this sign. This guy right here, he's also president, but he's president of the CTN Network, Christian Television Network. This guy, do you recognize him? <laughs> he's president of the United States of America, probably one of the most despised <laughs> among the Democrats <laughs> and other idiots that we've ever had as president. And you spoke at one of his rallies or something, didn't I you? I did. I had the great honor of opening the 2016 January rally in Pensacola, Florida. I think it was his first Florida rally. And wow. I, I, and his campaign asked me to open it. And I'm you didn't have your... Very honored. What a great honor And you didn't life. have your police officer's uniform on? No, 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 no. Been, How many years been a, in the... Been a in pastor. Ten, ten to eleven years uh, in in Florida law enforcement with two different sheriff's offices. Most of that time was spent with those two different sheriff's offices. But I've been in the pulpit for probably 33, 34 years. Did, did you get a kind of a, I don't want to say cocky, but I'll say it, <laughs> superior feeling attitude with all those guns and vest and that uniform on? No, 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 no. It no? was a humbling thing. When you put the badge and the uniform on and all those guns, you make yourself a target. Wow. So it was uh, Especially like today. most anyone else in uniform. I admire the men and women in uniform in our streets as well as all over the world serving the military because of that. I know what it's like. And yeah. you spent a lot of time in Branson. Yes, I do. Yeah, with uh, Jim and Lori at the yes. Jim Baker Show. I sure do. I'm very blessed. Um, yeah. Amazing guys. They're great friends of mine. They are. They are amazing. Can you uh, join me? Because I want you to meet my wife. Yes, I would sure. love to. She's actually down here. I know yeah. her. There she is. <laughs> Follow me. There's your chair right there. Okay, fantastic. And he knows me. Oh, yeah. does he really? Yeah, okay. he does. It's always great to be with you, hey. Sharon. Okay. Glad to have you, Carl. What a book. I, you know, I. this is truth. I, I, I knew he was smart. <laughs> I mean... Be careful now. <laughs> but when you read this book, you'll go... And, and it's, it's what I did. Right there it is on your screen. I thought, how does one man compile this kind of information? How does he do that? That means he has to do a ton of study. Mm -hmm. You need to get your copy. But this guy is Carl Gallops has been the senior pastor of the Hickory Mammoth Baptist Church. No, sir. It's what? Hickory Hammock Baptist Church. I'm sorry. It, listen, it's difficult. That's the, it? that's the name of a road. That's, okay. And when they Hammock. built the church, they named the church after the Hammock. road. It's Hickory Hammock okay. Baptist Church. And it's ha in Milton, Florida? It's in Milton, right outside of Pensacola. Yeah. Oh, wow. In that's Northwest a long Florida. Way. Yeah, it's a long way from here. <laughs> and you, you've been there since 1987 in that church. As the senior pastor, yes. 30 30, years. 31, I'm in my 31st 30, year 31st right year. now. Wow. That's so wonderful. That, that's, Thanks. I, I mean, in a Baptist church, well, that's kind of It's like, impossible. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> in a Baptist church, yes. yes. No, it's been a blessing. of. It's, it's, it's like a good marriage. I mean, it just fit. It clicked. And uh, we've been through the thick and thin, the ups and downs, been through some tough times in the early years and some really wonderful blessed times as well. And you know what's exciting about being in one church that long? When I went there, I was holding babies that were being born that are now yes. 31 years old, yes. married. I've done their weddings. I've been there to hold their children when they're born. Uh, and there were 10-year-olds when I went there that are now in their 40s, and they have young people that are either in the student ministry, and some, of course, have already graduated. I've already performed marriages of some of their children and getting ready to birth some of their grandbabies. So, so you <laughs> get to go wonderful. through several generations. I mean, it's a great blessing. Yeah. And, and, and my guess is you don't feel any older. Not a bit. Yeah. Yeah, and I demand that they tell me I don't look any older. <laughs> yes. yes, exactly Except right. I have little kids call, or, or, around the church now calling me Pastor Pawpaw. Because oh, I've really? been there so long, yeah. yeah. Oh. And I mean, I've been a part of their lives since they were born. So it's, it's, it's a blessing. It really is. More, more blessing than anything else. I'm not finished talking about your accolades. Oh, well, thank you. Please. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. The founder <laughs> of the online Penn News and Ministry Network. PNN, News and Ministry PNN. Network. PNN. Yes. 
uh, and is a longtime member of the Board of Regents at the University of Mobile in Mobile, Alabama. That's correct, yes. That's a, that's a major Christian university, uh, Southern Baptist in origin and founding, but of course receiving students from all walks of life and all over the world. Oh, great. Uh, he also is an Amazon Top 60 Best Selling Author. Yeah, thank you, Lord. He is a talk radio host since 2002. Two, yes, sir, 15 years. And has been featured on the Fox News Business Report as an influential evangelical leader. Yeah. yeah, thank you. That, that was back during, especially during the Trump campaign, the Fox Business Report uh, featured me with Pastor Robert Jeffress out of, yes. uh, and then Jerry Falwell Jr. and a couple of others because we were some of the very first in the nation uh, who, um, you know, are known in the public to uh, endorse uh, Donald Trump mm -hmm. publicly uh, for president. Yeah. And, 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 and you're still at the same church because, I mean, you know. Still there. I, I had I, I Jeffries on re recently and I said, how did they put up with you there? I know. I love Dr. Jeffries. Yeah, yeah, he's I a know. great I guy. I mean, you talk about wonderful. gutsy. Guy. Yeah, yeah. No, he is. Because, yeah, because your is. congregation may yes. hate the guy. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, and, I, and, and I'm not comparing myself to the stature of Dr. Jeffries, but I also, over the years and 30 years, have taken a lot of a lot of stands that people would see. It's interesting because they would call them now bold and courageous and all of that. But 30, 40 years ago, yeah. back, back when we were all younger in the ministry, mm -hmm. we, what, what, the things that Dr. Jefferson is saying that I'm saying now, we're just, I mean, most normal. pastors said that. They yes. were normal. Now normal. we're considered the outliers That's and right. the all right sudden, wing, mm -hmm. you know, uh, conspiracy theorists and all this stuff. I mean, it's just, it's just the, listen, the Word of God hasn't changed. Yeah. The culture, the world's culture is obviously changing yeah. around us quickly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the gods are behind the thrones yeah. <laughs> around the world, the fallen ones. And so, so yeah, things are changing rapidly. And so for a man like Dr. Jeffers or, or myself uh, to, to stand and to say, thus saith the word of God, mm -hmm. um, it, it, even in the United States, the largest Christian nation the planet has ever seen, even here, we're falling away from that, falling into an apostasy. So what used to be normal just a few decades ago is now considered to be on the outlying edges. Isn't it amazing that the, the President of the United States has done more to promote Christianity mm -hmm. than the presidents that said, we're born again. Yes, more, more than any president in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, including Ronald Reagan, who I adored. Oh, yes, me but, too. But, but, I mean, you know, and he did. And, I mean, you know, he, he proclaimed year of the yeah. Bible oh, yeah. and would speak about God and the Bible. I've got and all monuments that. in my house yes. of him. Yes, so, so not <laughs> so. taking anything away from him. Statues. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> not monuments. My, yeah, statues, not monuments. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Idols. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> and she's thinking but, about tearing it down. <laughs> that's it's right. like all the monuments. <laughs> Altars yes. and everything, yeah. yes, burning incense. Yeah. But, uh, but, but truly, uh, Donald Trump, and listen, I, I, I say this all the time in interviews, I, I did support him, I did come out publicly, I was asked to open one of his rallies, and I'm honored with all of that. That will be things that I will treasure the rest of my life. But I have always said that I don't consider Donald Trump to be the savior of this nation. He doesn't think of himself like that. Yeah. I don't consider him to be an angel from heaven. I do say that it appears to me and a lot of other believers that God somehow has his hand over that man, yeah. no doubt. And, and the Lord is using him. Um, and, I, and, and back during the election, when so many Christians were talking about, well, I don't even think I'm gonna vote. I said, please, please, wow. please, please, please do. Because the thing, oh, what I'm praying for is not that Donald Trump will be our savior, but that the Lord would maybe use him to give us a little breathing room because the way it was going, that's right. We, we were going to be, uh, you might not oh. be on the air. Oh. I may not be in my pulpit That's right. right now. That's right. That's where it was headed mm -hmm. and may still go there in the years to come. But I was, wow. I was telling Christians, please get out there and vote. You're not voting for a priest or a preacher or a Sunday school teacher or a pope or a bishop. We're voting for the next president of the United States. Let's vote that God would put his hand over him to give us uh, the believers some breathing room. But he he's, just kind of put his finger in the dam for really a has. little while. I, I but think you're right. Has. I agree with you. It'll come like a flood when he's Eventually. gone. Eventually, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's, that's what I believe mm -hmm. thus far.
Some of your titles in your book, I, I made a copy of that. Read some of the, the, this is some of the chapters in the book. I learned. Several years ago, I was <laughs> on one right. of your shows, and you 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 shoved my own I book in front that. of my face. I see, you see, you remember yeah. it, so I know your audience does. And that. it was, you I, saw was I, horrified. My glasses I was horrified. I was horrified. We're horrible. live on the air. You <laughs> hand me the book, said, "Here, read this." Yes. I didn't have my glasses, and I was doing this, <laughs> yeah. and then you gave me your glasses, yeah, and right. I couldn't read that didn't them. Work and, very well. And I, and I had to assure your audience, I can read. I yeah. promise, I can read. I just don't have my glasses. I prove it. Okay, what did you want me to read? Some of the chapter headings. Oh my gosh! Well, I'll just start going down. There's 36 <laughs> chapters, but they're but but they're like six or seven pages. I, I I try to write for the reader, and you were bragging about all the information that's in. I here. mean, it's phenomenal. Thank you. You're very it is. kind. But I, I hope you would agree with what I'm getting ready to say. I wrote this so that every pastor and every person in every pew across America would understand it. Yeah. And and I don't mean to be talking down to people. I'm just saying that even though there's a lot of information, I try not to write it at some doctoral uh, academic level. I, I wanted the, you know, the people in the pew to get this. Carl, what's your book about? Yes, thank you. It's called You're Gods welcome. and Thrones. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it starts off, did you know the seen and the unseen, uh, meet the relatives, restoring paradise, Elohim, the heavenly council, and right on through. Uh, here's, the, here's the deal. Let me tell you what it's about. All then right. you might want to know what the title means. This, this, this Part yeah, right Nakash, here. yeah, yes. Forgotten Prophecy, yes. Elohim. See, I don't need my glasses to read that yeah. because wow. I actually know the title of my okay. book. Okay, there it is right there. <laughs> now, now explain what that phrase is all about. All right, can I first you, you say what the... You, you can yeah. do... He you wants to answer my question you, first. You guys have asked me four questions. <laughs> yeah. What's the book about? What's yeah. the subtitle right. about? So what's the, what, are the, what are the contents? Yes. Ladies first. And, and what does it mean? What does the title mean? Okay. Ladies first, Miss Sharon, you've asked me what is the book about. Let me start there. That's Southern, Miss Sharon. Yes, yes, it is Southern. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Thank you. Um, my mom and dad raised me correctly. I'm yeah. getting off the subject. Go ahead. <laughs> what is the book about? Okay, the book is about this. I start in the first chapter, first verse, and, uh, literally in the Garden of Eden in the third chapter, and I move through the entire Word of God, bringing back connecting the dots, trying to once again infuse the understanding of the supernatural message of God's Word. Now, I know there are Christians listening saying, well, we, we understand that, but a lot of preaching doesn't, and a lot of people in the pews do not understand the supernatural realm, the supernatural message, the, the idea and the understanding of multiple dimensions of from reality. From Genesis to Revelation. Yes, from Genesis to Revelation, I lay down the theological groundwork in a way I think that everybody can understand. But it's but it but it's stuff you've probably never heard preached from a pulpit, never had in a Sunday school lesson. I had to read some of the chapters twice to yeah. get it to get yeah. it. Yeah, to wow. it's, it's to not, soak it all up. I mean, it's it's not like I got that. Right. I, I mean, trust me. Yes. When you read it, you're going to have to go. It's not difficult. What did he to, just say? It's not difficult to understand. It's just that most Christians have never heard this. But of course, I use 36 scholarly commentaries, 24 scholarly versions of the of, of the Bible, all kinds of doctoral thesis, peer-reviewed paper from scholars, language experts, to back up the claims that I'm making. So this is not stuff I've pulled out of my back pocket, as you've read. Yes. It's all documented. But the problem is, is that we've been so preaching poor for the last hundred years in our nation that from the pulpits and the pews in our Sunday school classes, most Christians don't know what's in here, you're yet right, what's right. in here is central to understanding who God is, what He's up to, who we are, where it's all headed, what's happening in the world now. We're watching it come unglued, we think, and one of the points I make in the book is it's really not falling apart. It's really coming together okay. just as Hit God's Word that. said. That was my yeah. first question. Yeah. Believe it so, not. Yeah. You just answered okay. well, so. So the bottom line, what's it about? It's about laying the theological groundwork, infusing the supernatural understanding back in, watch, moving that into the headlines of today's world so that we get it. And people do. Once they go through, then they see, I, I have one guy say, I put the book down. He said, I literally walked outside in my front yard and just looked around. He said, I get it now. I mean, I mean, that was the impact it had on him because, wow. because it moves it to, the, the, to, to today's headlines, then it moves it into your own personal life, then it moves it into the age to come. In other words, where, how are we connected to what God is going to do through you gotta Jesus Christ? You've got to walk it Christ? out. You just walk it out. So 
36 chapters, but six or seven pages per chapter, easy to read. You probably will want to have a marker and yeah. go back through and read it a few times. It's not hard to understand. Pad. That's what I like. It's I, just I, that I so much of it that's there is, yeah. is you've never heard before, but yet it's the Word of God from Did beginning to end. Did you know God has two families? Yeah. No, I know that. Did you know that? Oh, the book says. <laughs> I know. I know. Give, give a, you know, uh, we, we've Thank got you. about... 12 minutes left. Okay. It not. All right. Then I'll give a quick two minute answer. Okay. And let me just say to your audience that everything we're talking about, I usually have two or three chapters on each of these things we're talking about. So I'm giving the quick answer. So please, if you have any interest, get it, read it, and yeah, you'll yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah. But the two family concept is, is very important. Let me do it like this. The book of Ephesians says it like this in chapter one, beginning with verse 10. It's, and I'm going to paraphrase, but it says, uh, it says that the, that God has revealed to us the mystery of his will. He's bringing everything in heaven and everything on earth together under one head, Jesus Christ. That's the mystery of His will. That's what's happening right before us. He's in the process of getting ready to restore paradise to the restitution of all things. Mm -hmm. But there are things that have to work out on, on earth as there have been things that had to work out in heaven with Satan and the fallen realm, etc. But you move to Ephesians 3 and then Paul offers up a prayer and then he speaks of our Father in heaven from which our, the family in heaven and the family on earth derives its name. And so I do a study of that, and sure enough, he's speaking of the angelic realm, the heavenly family, the earthly realm, the family of humanity, which were together in the Garden of Eden. We had a divine nature until we gave it up. But God's going to restore all of that. That's one of the promises of eternity. See, the thing about salvation, guys, we talk about, well, I'm saved. Yeah, praise God, I go to church, give a little money, listen to a sermon, go home, I'm saved. Oh, my gosh. It's so much bigger than that, guys. Yes. God is doing something. He's getting ready to restore everything. That's the promise of His Word. Jesus isn't coming back so that we will uh, feel good about ourselves. He's coming back because He's going to rule and reign. And the Word of God says that His people will rule and reign with Him. The Bible says, don't you know, you will judge angels in that day. You will judge the nations in that day. You will sit upon thrones. You will rule and reign. You will be a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Not everybody's going to be in that category. No, no, of course. I mean, people that are under the... I, I'm talking about even the ones in heaven. Oh, even, yeah. Be, 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 I, I mean, you know, I if, you, if you think somehow you're going to be one of the rulers... How are you doing here? Thank you. How are you doing here? I, the last four chapters of my book, In fact, I chapter talk about 10, that. no other gods. Yeah. I mean, you, talk, you have a whole chapter 10, yeah. no other gods. Right. Well, the whole thing connects together. Like I said, I connect the dots to all of this stuff that we're talking about. But in the last chapters, I speak of, and this is, you've raised a very important point, thank you, and that is a lot of Christians don't understand that we are held accountable for the gift of salvation that God has given us. Right. That's why Paul said, when at his death, he says, look, I fought the fight. I finished the race. I kept the faith. He didn't say, I've been a perfect Christian. He said, I just, I kept fighting. I kept running. I finished. I kept the faith. And he says, and now there's a crown of righteousness laid up for me in heaven. He says, and for all who long for his appearing and, and, and who serve the Lord. So the point being, we're also told that there will be Christians, there will be a judgment seat of Christians, not for our salvation, right. that's under the blood, under the blood. but we are judged for what we did yeah. with what God gave us. That's yeah. what Jesus' parable of the talents, the parable of the minas, the parable right. of the field workers, the parable of the vineyard, it was all about, I'm holding you accountable while I'm gone. Yeah. When I come back, what you've done to him who has much, more will be given. Yeah. And because if you've been, if you've invested your life, your money, your talents, your time, your thoughts, your body, honor God with your body. Yeah, and if you're coming yeah. to church, sitting in the pew, saying, "Give me," that's right, "Give me, give me, give me, give me,", give yeah, me. Right, and right. you get up, I'm entitled. You get up and you go, "Where are you going to eat?" <laughs> that's right. You know, that's what, right. Are you preacher watch, preached a little long. Are, are you going to yeah. watch the football that's game right. today? Yeah. You know, and you, and, right. and you go all week and you do this right. all week right. and you come back and say, "Give me some more." That's right. And I don't. And, what, and, and you're yeah. doing. All the talents you get, you, you're using none of them. Thank you. So somehow right. we get the idea that, oh, when I'm in heaven, I'm going to be one of the rulers. Yes. Uh -uh. Uh, no, that's right. Thank you. You said it better. than I'm, Next time I write a book, I'm going to call you. <laughs> I, I, every time I'm on this program with you, I You're say, inspired, I'm right? telling you, I'm telling you, I'm always saying, you said that better than I did. <laughs> but anyway, no, that's good. You, you talk about Baal worship today? Yeah, yeah. How long do I have? 
<laughs> as long as you want. <laughs> well, thank Go. You. Okay. <laughs> well, the, I, I have several chapters on this, but yeah. the bottom line, Baal, B-A-A-L, in, in, in Hebrew it would yeah. be pronounced Baal, but, yeah. but we say it You're in so English, we call it Baal. Amazing. Well, not, not necessarily. But <laughs> the bottom line is that's the oldest form of pagan religion that the Word of God brings to us. The Canaanite ancient culture had it. The Israelites were always falling into it. What did it consist of then? It consisted of child sacrifice. It consisted of all manner of sexual perversion. It consisted of substance abuse. It consisted of all kinds of promises and of, from this God, if you sacrificed your children, if you gave him your allegiance, if you did all these things, that he would make you rich. And you're just talking you. about San Francisco. Yeah, I'm just talking about San Francisco <laughs> yeah. now. I haven't even moved to the Bible yet. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, but no, I'm going all the way back yeah. to the Old Testament. But the, but the thing is, and people say, well, gosh, we're still sacrificing our children, 70 million abortions and all, and plus we sacrifice them to the culture. Yeah. We hand them a cell phone, give them a computer, and give them a video game, and we go do our thing and sacrifice them to the culture. Um, I mean, I can go through all sexual perversion, substance abuse, all of that was involved. So we're still at the altar of Baal if we're not thoroughly immersed in, 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 in a biblical worldview, which is what God said, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. And right. I'm telling you, it's a fight, Carl. Yes. Oh, I know. I mean, I, I'm 78 years old. I'm still fighting it's to a, keep sin back there and to keep righteousness yeah, here. Yeah, it's a day by day. I thought I thought you were getting ready to point to Sharon. I'm still fighting to keep her straight. <laughs> I mean, you, you did let this, and I, I mean, it scared you, me. This girl, <laughs> Mother Teresa. Oh, She's the Holy Spirit that. in yeah. your life. But 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 you asked me about Baal, and so what? What? Wh one of the chapters I have on this is this. This blows people away when they read this. That. That, that is nothing other than Satan. In the New Testament, Jesus calls Baal Satan, Beelzebub, which means Lord of the Flies. Baal means Lord in, in the pagan sense. Lord of the Flies. Of the Flies, Beelzebub. Or, or, or the ancient ones would, call, would mean Lord of, the fil of Filth wow. because flies gather over filth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So who's the Lord of Filth? Jesus said, that's Satan. He said that in the New Testament. I have all this document in my book, but watch. So uh, people are astounded when they find out that in 2016, and 2017, that the, the archway to the temple of Baal in Syria was destroyed in all the wars and everything, and a group of billionaire investors got together, rebuilt the thing, took it on a world tour in 2016, 2017, that watch, that, list, that started in London, went to New York, went to Dubai, and went to Italy. What's important about that? Those are center of globalist economic powers. And it went to London first, and it was unveiled on Beltane, with Beltane, which is the, the international uh, day of worship of Baal. Still, there are pagans who worship Baal specifically. And so that is where it opened. It went from there to New York. It, what, what's in New York? United Nations. Uh, all that. Mm -hmm. Then it went from Dubai. What's there? The World Glo Globalist Governance Council. Then it went to Italy. What's there? The G7 conference. Every one of those things opened with the unveiling of this archway to the Temple of Baal, which is, is symbolic of walking through. I'm dedicating myself to Baal. Every one of them opened with ceremonies. In our lifetime. So it was originally in Syria, did you say? Ma'am? Did you say it was It was originally in, in Syria. Yeah. Yeah. But with, with the collapse of the Middle East and, right, and, and right. Arab Spring and ISIS and all that, it mm -hmm. got destroyed. The okay. Temple of Baal that was built by the Romans was destroyed. You okay. talk about Islam and Baal. Yeah. Is there a similarity? Well, it, yes, in that they... <laughs> and an alliance. E, e, yeah, well, not necessarily an alliance between them as far as the earthly vision of religions goes. See, it was the, the a lot of the ISIS fighters were the ones that destroyed those temples because they were saying that that's pagan to them. Yes. But of course, but but of course, there is that connection in that we know that uh, that Islam, in and of itself, denies it has the spirit of Antichrist in it. According to the Word of God, yeah. it denies that Jesus is the Son of God. Denies that Jesus is the Savior. Right. Denies that Yahweh is the Lord God. So there's that spiritual connection. See, here's the thing: I tell people, Satan doesn't care how religious you are. That's true. He doesn't care if you're religious or not religious. Yeah. Satan's religious. People tell me all the time, "Well, I believe in God." I say, "Well, good. So does Satan." Yeah. Well. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. How's that? I, so does Satan. Well, okay, then I believe the Bible's the Word of God and that Jesus is the only way of salvation and that He died on a cross and that He rose from the grave. How's that? And I say, Satan believes all that too. Well, then how am I any different from Satan? Satan will not bow his knee to Jesus as Lord, will you? See, there's the difference. All the religions of the world reject bowing their knee to Jesus as Lord.
but there is a relationship with Jesus Christ, see, through the message of the Word of God. And Good. that's what I'm saying, that's how the connections are. And Satan doesn't care. Pick your flavor, pick your poison, pick the lure that he's going to fish for you. It doesn't matter to him. Whoever will bite what, as long as you don't bow your knee to Jesus. Close this out. Three minutes. Yes. There's your camera. Yes. Oh, okay. You're, you mean like right now? You right, want me to, right. I get to preach yes. for three minutes? Yes. You know how hard yes. that is for a Baptist preacher? Yeah, yeah. 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 Think the, of it as 15. Yeah. Well, the most important thing I would just say is thank you for having me on. If, if you can, get the book, God's and Thrones. Oh, it's an I amazing think it, book. I think it, it really is amazing. Well, the Lord has blessed it, and, 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 and I give Him all praise and glory. I think it'll change your life. People who've read it from cover to cover say that it has. But more important than any of that, let me just say, Romans 10, 9 is very clear. That's one of my favorite passages just to share with people quickly, because Romans 10, 9 says, if you would confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, then you shall be saved. And Romans 10, 13 says, and, and then whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, I'm going to add the words like that, shall be saved. Can you pray with somebody right now? I would be glad to. You, you've got two minutes. You only took 60 seconds. Well, I wasn't finished, but I saw your finger go up, so I thought that you were trying to give me the... <laughs> I was just picking my nose. <laughs> but, uh, see, yeah. I'm very attentive. Yeah, I'm very attentive to those cues. <laughs> I know. I know. Okay, uh, finish it out. Here we go. <laughs> okay, so I'm just saying to the audience, listen, if you're, if you're listening today, if you're watching today, and you have never surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, that's, that's, what, the, yes. that's what life is all about. That's why the that's Bible says... That's why you says, wrote this. That's why I wrote this. Uh, that, uh, that's what... Uh, uh, if Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10 says, here's the mystery of God's will. He's bringing everything together yeah. to heaven and earth, the obedient in heaven, the obedient in earth that are under the blood of Christ, yeah. under the rule of Jesus. So you've got to be right with your Creator through Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 9, confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart God's raised Him from the dead. Those of you that are born again believers, I tell you, God is holding us accountable for what we do with our salvation. Honor God, Romans 12 verse 1. Offer your body as a living sacrifice and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In that way, you will know what God's perfect will is for your life. That's my quick message. If, an, if a totally agnostic yes. picked this book up, yes. would they understand anything they're reading? If, if their heart and mind was open to reading the truth of what God's Word says, absolutely. I mean, I mean, it's not the Bible, it's not that anointed, yeah. but I mean, it's about the Word of God and it explains it yeah. from Genesis to Revelation. So I think, that, I think that they would, yes. I think it's for anybody. Get your copy. Dave's going to show the cover one more time. Go to that website on the screen and get your copy. And you folks that, are, that know the Word of God, you know, I've done a lot of these interviews. We're looking at our, this is our 38th year. <laughs> we lose track, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> 38 years. Read a lot of books, some 2,000 plus. This is the most detail on this subject I have ever seen. Thank you. And I mean, it is, it is not just thrown together. It is like together. Thank you. So you that are watching, get your, and you, you Bible scholars, I'm telling you, you might, you might think, you know, you, you know it. Read this. Yeah. Let me know. We just scratched the did surface. I, did I <laughs> just discover something different? You will find it there. Thank you for joining us today. Jesus Christ is the answer Amen. to every need you may have. Bye -bye. Thank you for watching. It's time. If you have recently made a decision for Christ, Herman and Sharon would like to hear from you.